creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. Welcome to Creative Living today. We're going to learn how to dress to look 10 pounds thinner. We'll demonstrate making a delicious toffee and talk about fitting and designing knits. Most women are looking for ways to look 10 pounds thinner, and one of my guests today is Nancy Nix Rice, and she's a wardrobe consultant and author from St. Louis, Missouri. Nancy's going to demonstrate on herself how to make garment and accessory changes that will result in a slimmer and more flattering look. My next two guests are Kimberly Reiner and Jana Sanzaguero, and they're cookbook authors who live in Tarzana, California. These gals are going to demonstrate making a delicious seaside toffee. Each recipe in their cookbook has a wonderful story behind it, and we'll hear the story about this toffee as it's being made. Kimberly and Jenna are often referred to as the Sugar Mamas, and their cookbook is titled Sugar, Sugar, Every Recipe Has a Story. And we'll begin the show with Connie Crawford, and she's a pattern designer who owns her own company called Fashion Patterns by Connie. She's going to talk about how to fit and design knit garments. Connie will also show sketches of knit designs that illustrate the various knit fabrics and the stretch elements in each one. She lives in Hansville, Washington. Connie, thank you so much for being here today. I know you've spent your life, your adult life anyway, designing uh, various patterns, um, gowns and things, but when you said we were going to talk about knits, I didn't really think about what type of designing goes into knits. Yes, well, designing knits has been a very fun part, especially since knits are so popular nowadays. Uh -huh. A lot of people just see the Walmart knit, but a lot of knits are developed for casual wear and ev all the way through evening wear, oh, uh -huh. and they're done in jackets and stuff. And we're talking here today about sewing knits so uh -huh. that you're not talking about the knitted knits that, uh, design, uh, that you would do with needles. Uh -huh. So in this case, we're looking today at the uh, knit weight because that changes the oh, actual yeah. drape of the design. Mm -hmm. So each knit has to be draped individually. And then the drape stretch is shown in my draping book, The too. amount of yeah. stretch is what so you're So that you understand about. that. Uh -huh. And then we'll take a look at some actual pictures. And there, to show you a little bit about all the various styles, you can wow. have jackets, you can have tops, you can have uh, longer uh, jackets, you can have tea tops in various styles, mm -hmm. and you can have dresses, and you can, this is a real draped knit, that's mm -hmm. a real draped knit that really takes a lot of draping. Once you have a master pattern though, which I'm going to show you now, is how to make a master pattern drape, and then once that's done, then you can design from that actual drape so that you're not redoing and starting from scratch each time. That's the key is to yes. have that master pattern master that pattern. fits you. Right. Uh -huh. So I've started it for time's sake. I've started it by pinning a, a knit fabric right into the dress form mm -hmm. and then draping the cross grain at the bust line level so we have full bust amount first and then draping our side seam so that everything is straight up and down all the way through here. Once you have this then you're going to trim your neckline we're not measuring, we're just, right, right. now, we're just getting no rid of fabric. No measuring and draping. That is what the nice part about <laughs> uh, draping is. That is nice. And then you're going to look and see, oh, if I was mm -hmm. doing woven, I'd end up having a dart here. Well, in this case, how you take care of that, watch this, it's a real trick, is that you just pull it up and out, and it's, oh, it's gone. gone. Uh -huh. It's just gone. And so that's why you drape knits. You cannot flat pattern a knit. Oh. Once you have this knit, then you can take your chalk and you can actually just draw, draw in your shoulder seam and draw on the side seam. Mm -hmm. And then there's one little trick I want to show you is that when you start an armhole here, you have the middle, the top, the, top, the middle, and the bottom at the plate. But the trick is, as soon as I cut this away, you're going to have gaposis in your arm hole itself. And I think we and all have experienced yes. having something that yes, that happens yes. too. And mm -hmm. so the trick is, and I learned this years ago in the industry, 
is you come in a quarter of an inch and blend it to nothing at that cross grain. Then as you redrape on the, this. On the front side. Right, mm -hmm. on, on, it'll be on the back too. And we're not oh. gonna show you the back, but we'll show you the finish of a back. Oh, and then you're pulling so, that over. And then we pulled it, and all of a sudden everything is flat as can uh -huh. be. So it actually curves a little, and that's how you can tell whether the pattern is correct or not. Then you continue marking the, the corners so that you can mm -hmm. take it off of the dress form. And then you do the same thing to the back. And then we'll end this up This becomes showing you. your pattern. Then, yeah, and which then is that's where we're going to now, now become your pattern. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to show you the pattern itself. So as we have this here, we have the front and the back, and you actually oh, have this to. This is that fabric, right? Uh -huh. And then you're going to have it trued up. It's called, and you can see how this is why you uh, staple it to Manila paper is because it starts to just manipulate on its own. Oh, so because knits are soft, right? Mm -hmm. And so they start to curl and everything. Mm -hmm. So once you have this, you've trued up your front and your back. You'll notice the back is longer than the front, and it is not mm -hmm. the same as the front. And I've seen many patterns that are the same, and you don't want that. You really want to be able to have a fully draped one, not a flat patterned one. Oh. Once you check it, then you put it together here and you make sure that the side seams are exactly the same shape mm -hmm. right and that here. the front is actually bigger than the back. The front's and bigger to allow the, for the bust area. Across yeah. here. Mm -hmm. And then, but the shoulders are longer in the mm -hmm. back and that's how you can tell a fully balanced pattern and that the armholes are also balanced that the back armhole is it's one big. half inch longer one than, the front, inch. Uh -huh. than the front armhole. Oh. Then and once that's done, you can make various sleeves and the sleeve drafts, and you can draft that, but you still drape fit. Short sleeve, long sleeve, right. whatever type you want. Once yeah. you have uh -huh. that, then you can actually make it a little bit bigger just by adding another inch to the side seams, maybe another inch to the uh, half inch to the armhole and the shoulder, and redrape it. So you're not starting from scratch each time. Uh -huh. And then you have a looser fit. So and you, you can keep go, these master patterns. Right, and, and then you, have, you maintain your curvature, you maintain your balance. Uh -huh. And it's just much faster to and do it that way. When you're working with knits, do you allow the a typical five eighths inch seam allowance, or it's do you whatever. allow a little less? If you're less? in the industry, you'll be half inch, and if you're in the uh, uh, home sewing, many times you'll be a five eighths inch. However, in the industry, I've also seen quarter inch seam allowances. But you have to make sure that it's from the stitch line. Don't sew a quarter inch seam allowance when it all the pattern already gives you a five eighths oh, inch seam okay. allowance. Oh, okay, that's important to it's know. Very important. I've seen people do that and changes the the actual fit of oh, it. Oh, sure it would. So in this case, you would have a little larger sleeve. Mm -hmm and a semi-fitted sleeve mm -hmm. also Slightly for longer. it. Uh -huh. And you still have the same balance on here. You always check your balances, that the side seams are always the same shape and length, and that you, your front is bigger than the back. Mm -hmm. And then you turn it over, uh -huh. and you have your longer back here, mm -hmm. okay? okay? So uh, as you have that, then, then you can start designing. So in this case, we've sh we're showing you here a nicely sweetheart neckline mm -hmm. that has also added some trim to it, and we just use simple bias binding. Mm -hmm. Now that's your uh, very simple, sleeve, simple very drape, simple. but you can uh -huh. do, as you saw on our board earlier, you can do various necklines, you can do various dresses, but you can always start with that master pattern and then start manipulating the knit differently. Mm -hmm. Well, I never knew that draping was so important in a knit. I knew it was in very fitted, like evening gowns. But so I've learned a lot. Thank yeah, you very much. You. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm very pleased to have the original Sugar Mamas here today, Jenna and Kimberly. Thank you. Thank you. And I thoroughly enjoyed the cookbook. I read every page. I didn't read all the ingredients, of course, but I read the stories because that's what's unique about your cookbook, isn't it, uh, Kimberly? Absolutely. Every one of our recipes comes with a story mm -hmm. about the person that, that created the recipe mm -hmm. and about the family. And all these foods really are emotional triggers for us about growing up and what we loved about our families. So that is what we found so unique and special about all these recipes. And Jenna, you said you met some really wonderful people as oh, you were yes. getting the stories. And from all over the country. So their stories are very different. You know, it's very regional in mm -hmm. the South. You'll hear some of the similar things, and, and they'll be completely different from what we heard in the uh, Northeast. Or, oh, I bet that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you couldn't have picked a better recipe here, toffee. And 
I always make it during the holidays, but sometimes I think, why? Why not make it year oh, yes. round for That's every right. occasion? What was so unique about this recipe? Well, this recipe is um, about a mother and a daughter, now both grown women, and they get together and make this recipe together. Still they do? Live by, they still do. Every year they live by the seaside, so we call it seaside toffee. Oh, I see. And um, it just evokes that mother and daughter oh. holiday get together and they get together and create this and they give it out for the holidays to their friends, their neighbors, their colleagues, their co-workers. They said they have to make extra every year to make sure there are imagine. no fights. No oh, fights. Yeah. From people cool. saying you got more than me. And remember, I'm your newest <laughs> friend, right? That's right. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's right. Exactly. So you've already started a little yeah, bit, Jenna. So what have you done? Yeah, so it's really simple. Right here what I have in the pan is uh, Two, two cups of butter, which is four two sticks cups, of butter, four sticks. two cups of sugar, and three tablespoons of water. And you just let that go and, and bring it up to um, what we call hard crack stage, which is about 300 degrees on a candy thermometer. So you just pop you that You know, in. that brings Smells up so a point. Good. I think sometimes people think that candy make cookie making you think oh, well anybody could do that maybe but candy making is sort of science and that hard crack or soft crack or we love to talk exactly, about that exactly yeah, you know right. well this is my little lab then and science it baking is a science it is but it's not rocket science no, no. <laughs> you know not rocket so science. we say that all the time and and i had never made candy before we started testing recipes for the book i've been baking for uh -huh. my whole life but um, candy making. That's mm -hmm. why we decided to show you this recipe today because it's so easy. Mm -hmm. So easy. And we want your viewers to see that they don't have to be afraid of and it. And they can do right. it. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Right. So you're going to uh, start with, you'll, you'll toast some almonds and chop mm -hmm. them. And you know um, that sounds like a little extra trouble, but boy is it worth it. It, it is. The smell of toasted And all you do is oven. throw them on a baking sheet, pop them in the oven for five to ten minutes until mm -hmm. you start to smell mm -hmm. it. Pull them out, and they're the ready aroma. to go. That's yeah, when you absolutely. know it's ready. And pecans are good that way. Absolutely. Delicious. Any kind of nut. Uh -huh. It's fabulous. So, so, so these uh, are almonds, and we're just going to take about a half a cup. And, and no, sprinkle we don't them. need to spray that. Nope. Nope. We don't spray oh, it. No. It's easy. ready to go. Yep, ready yep. to go. There's enough butter in the caramel exactly. <laughs> to do us <laughs> justice. So you just spread it around, and then you're going to take two cups. This is four cups of oh, chocolate chips, so you're going to take about half of it, and you're going to also just spread it around your tray. Mm -hmm. Really easy. I mean, you can get the kids involved in this. I mean, you know, if they steal a few chocolate chips, we already know that's going to mind. Exactly. We've been doing it. Exactly. So they and should you, have their fun too. You can't really mess it up. That's it's layering yeah, with some beauty caramel in the middle. So a little extra mm. chocolate chips here, a little nuts. You don't have to be so specific. Uh -huh. So the tricky part is not that tricky at all. You're, you're, you got your butter and your sugar caramelizing here. And once it gets to a nice caramely peanut butter color, which is kind of oh. a nice. Uh -huh. brown, what we like tend to think of as caramel color. Yes, Doesn't it exactly. smell delicious? It smells it fabulous. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then you're going to take it and you're just going to pour it right over the top here. Actually, I lied. First, you're going to mix in another oh. half a cup of your almonds. So you just pour that right in. Mm -hmm. And stir. How much vanilla do you need? You got one tablespoon of vanilla. Thank you, Kimberly. And we're just gonna stir that in as well. And the almonds are just. Thank you. Mm -hmm. that sizzling? Yes. Mm, and nice. Or if I ever dump extra, I just say, and then That's a little right. bit extra. I always for the pot. err on That's the right. side of generous. <laughs> I like vanilla flavor, so I, I always too. just drop a few extra I do too. dribbles in there. So, Measure it over the pot so it'll look That's dri right. dribble on it. Now you just take it, I'll use my little oven mitt here, pour it right over the top of your. The color is so beautiful. It is. Of your chocolate and almonds. You know, I've been nibbling as we were getting ready for this, and I have to say, I, there's a, a man locally here that makes such wonderful toffee, and his is, is excellent. And this is really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe even better. <gasps> but it's, you know, it's that creamy. I don't like toffee that's so hard that makes right. me wonder about my teeth and that's my right. Exactly. You're going to chip a tooth. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So this is fabulous. So then we're going to just let that set. For a few minutes, and, mm -hmm. and while we do that, so this is what it looks this. like, right? So our contributor Jill, um, when she I had her make the recipe for us and videotaped her, and what we like to say is when you get people in the kitchen making their own recipe, they tell you a lot more information comes out. I bet that's true. So when she was making it, she said she had the best idea. She said all these little, these little extra little pieces because everyone wants to take the big chunk. Oh sure. Uh -huh. um, she likes to make those into um, ice cream toppers. So we Great have idea. we have some gift giving ideas. Out. Meanwhile, over here, I'm just going to our... sprinkle the balance of the chocolate chips over the top here. Let those soak into my. I thought you were going to say these are just for the cook to eat. But That's right. That well, too. that too. 
That so too. isn't that a wonderful idea? So you mm -hmm. can pack your big pieces of toffee and mm -hmm. then all the little extra pieces. Well, you and Maybe I would probably eat, eat them. Mm -hmm. But if you had enough self-control, <laughs> you can put them in some jars uh -huh. and make them as gifts. That's a great idea. Wouldn't I that think be so, again, bowl. everything gets used. Uh -huh. Nothing goes to waste. Exactly. So I don't think then, we'd ever have to worry about this no. recipe going to waste. No. And you, you've sprinkled the rest of your chocolate chips over the top. As it starts to melt, you just sort of spread it out in the pan. Take the rest oh. of your almonds, mm -hmm. sprinkle them right over the top. Again, you can get the kids involved if you want to. And generously. you know, another good thing is I'm thinking in the kitchen a lot of times, I don't have a double oven, which I would love, but only would use it once or twice. But, you know, sometimes you're busy cooking things. This is a great recipe because it's made on the stove top. Right. You can exactly. have something else going on the oven while That's you're right. making this. And so that just sets up, you Beautiful. set it aside. How long does it have to set up? It has to set uh, overnight. Overnight. Just, okay. Overnight. And so this is what it looks like. Oh. So this has been set overnight. Mm -hmm. And then we just take some type of, now we were laughing. If it were us, we'd, you know, take a, a boot. Oh. <laughs> but, um, you know, take if you don't a have heel. a boot, something uh -huh. sharp or even uh -huh. like a meat mallet or, oh. you know, if you, mm -hmm. I like to keep a hammer, oh. you know, just for cooking, cooking. purposes. Uh -huh. And you just can break that up into pieces and it looks like this. Mm -hmm. And then package it as gifts. Package it. And or eat it at sure. home. And you bet. But, but you know, this would be something because it does make a lot that you could, could do as gifts. Sometimes, Perfect. you know, you have to do a whole recipe for one gift. Absolutely. So this would make several. Multiple. Or uh -huh. something unique for a bake sale. Instead of bringing cookies, you could take put them in little baggies that could be sold individually. I think it'd be as a your, idea. As your ice cream topper. Mm. Yeah. Delicious. It would be. And what a cute way to use up little old jars that you have left from jams or exactly. jellies. Exactly. Right. And your ribbons and your papers mm -hmm. and all those little extra odds and ends. Well, thank you both for sharing such a great recipe and the story is so nice. I can see why mother and daughter enjoy doing this together every year. Absolutely. Thanks, Cheryl. Thank you. Nancy, thank you so much for being here. Um, we're going to cover lots of things today and I've seen you dress to the hilt and I have to admit, this segment is going to be on how to look 10 pounds thinner. So is, is this the after or the before? Well, this is definitely the before. <laughs> and I wanted to start with three really classic pieces, a basic little slim skirt, a plain shell underneath, and an easy cardigan, things that every woman probably has yes. in her wardrobe. Um, and that are perfectly fine pieces, but I want to show you how some little changes can make a huge difference in not only how polished, but also how pounds off pounds a person off. can uh -huh. look. Okay, well let's so, see you work your magic. Well let's start from the bottom up. Okay. Um, we've started out with a really comfortable little loafer, a perfectly nice shoe, but the downside of it isn't really just the fact that it's a low heel, that it's flat, but that it's what we call a high vamp, which means that the tongue on the front of that shoe covers almost half my foot. Oh, it does. Uh -huh. Look at the difference when we slide into a low vamp shoe that exposes more, more foot, foot. Uh -huh. and all of a sudden your legs look two to three inches longer. What would we give for two to three ex inches <laughs> of extra height? So that's a great starting point. So think from the bottom up. We're going to work right from the bottom up. The next thing we're going to look at is our slim skirt. Like the majority of slim skirts in the world, it fits out over my hips and falls straight. Uh -huh. But look how much sleeker the look becomes when I pretend that we've tapered the side seams. Now you and I both know that I'm actually holding the back of the skirt and uh -huh. that's not what we're suggesting. But if a person who sews herself or someone who doesn't can have her dressmaker angle those Taper side seams in. just slightly and all of a sudden again your whole lower body looks sleeker. Now uh -huh. I can't do the rest of the segment holding my no. skirt behind <laughs> my back so I'm going to let you clip that for me okay. real quickly so it'll stay in that position. And while you're doing okay. that, I'm also going to lose the wide waistband on this skirt. This one Looks happens, happens to look. be a fake, mm -hmm. but what it does is shorten up mm -hmm. your upper torso. Look how much better when we convert to a skirt mm -hmm. with a narrow waistband or no waistband at all. So now you have more length through that uh -huh. middle part of your body. Oh, I'll let yeah. you have a you waistband. Disregard that. Another <laughs> sneaky little trick is just to push oh. up 
the I think sleeves that looks so much better. on that sweater. By exposing more skin here, again, your whole body looks taller and trimmer. Now, these sleeves are staying pushed up really comfortably, but that's not mm -hmm. always the case. No. That's why I love these little I sweater sleeve bands. They're like garters for your sleeves, and they simply slide right up just above your elbow, and then the excess fabric from mm -hmm. where you pushed it up slides down, completely covers the band, and you mm -hmm. can stay comfortably and flatteringly pushed up all day long. Well, I'd never thought about the fact that it does make you look slimmer. It just elongates the I think whole if look, you have short it? arms, it's just an awkward length if they're long and they come down too long. So I always tend to push them up. <laughs> well, and any sleeve that's too long and comes down over your hand pulls people's focus downward on your body. You always want the focus flowing upward, partly to focus on your face mm -hmm. and partly because it elongates every bit of you. Now, another really sneaky trick for looking oh. taller and trimmer is shoulder pads. I agree. Now, you may have heard, and many people have, that shoulder pads are supposedly out. What that means is that in current fashion, when you buy a tailored jacket, it doesn't have those gigantic oversized shoulder pads um, that look like something off that Dynasty TV show. <laughs> What we're talking about is a little subtle shoulder support that's really a silhouette balancing tool. These now, are removable foam. Now, would you put this under the cardigan foam. or under your, your okay, excuse Excellent me. Excellent <laughs> question. Um, it depends. If you're going to leave the cardigan on all day, mm -hmm. you get the absolute best stick em by having fabric on, on both fabric. sides of the I shoulder see. pads. Uh -huh. But the texture of these is similar really to Velcro. So it adheres to fabric. So if I wanted to be able to take my cardigan off, let's say just, oh, for instance, that I was going through security at the airport uh -huh. and I didn't want to whip off my cardigan and have two shoulder, shoulder pads, pads flying across the security <laughs> checkpoint, I certainly could anchor them under that underlayer sweater as well. Uh -huh. Absolutely. That is amazing what it does to you. And for those of us who do need that little extra whip, I can see how that makes it creates that line coming down. Absolutely, so many women are really under the mistaken belief that they already have these huge shoulders and they want to minimize them. Look at any supermodel on the runway. That Very silhouette nice is all about this wonderful squared shoulder. Now you don't want to look like a fullback, but these give you a really mm -hmm. natural curve and just lift and, you and don't balance even see the them. silhouette, don't mm -hmm. they? They uh, they're, do. I think they're one of those don't leave home without them items. <laughs> I do too. Now, if we That's really beautiful. want to anchor the focus up high around our face, either a great necklace or a great scarf is a terrific way to do that. I have a scarf handy today. This is so let what, me, about 60 inches? This is a 60 okay. inch rectangle, and I'm just going to twist it a little bit, tuck the ends through. Now, do you see oh. how much more forcefully all your attention ends Goes up, up to the face. at the top? Uh -huh. And we want to punctuate that with a pair of statement earrings, which simply means an earring that it's bold enough that it commands focus. They don't have to be the size of a hubcap, but you <laughs> want them to be visually dominant within the look. So now all the focus is landing up here. All of this is sleeked down. Oh, and I'm hoping that you you'll look like feel a different person. That I look at least <laughs> 10 pounds thinner, right? Uh -huh. And a little bit more chic as well. I heard a lady say one time, and of course this was back when shoulder pads were really in and they mm -hmm. were the bigger ones. She said, for every pair of shoulder pads you wear, it takes five pounds off. It does and make a huge a, difference. Mm -hmm. it, it does. It really, really does. So I hope people will get over that mistaken belief that they're somehow 80s and not what you want to uh -huh. do. You only want to do shoulder pads if you have any issue about your body from the shoulders down. If there's anything in here mm -hmm. that you wish you had a little less of or honestly that you wish was back up where it used to be. Shoulder pads <laughs> yeah. will do it every time. That's great. Those are great tips and those are just some of the tips that are in your book, looking good. And that's, that's what right. we all strive to do is looking good at work or at home or pleasure or whatever. Thank you very much, Nancy. It was my pleasure. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to create our own quilt background and we'll share some beauty industry dirty secrets. One of my next guests is a quilter and a designer, and she's going to demonstrate what she calls playing in the grid. She'll show how to use a paint stick primer on the background fabric, and then use the grid as a guide for your own individual quilted creation.
We'll also talk to a skincare specialist who owns her own line of organic products. She's going to talk about some of the actual chemicals used in skincare products and explain how they may be contributing to serious health problems. I think you'll find this very interesting. Both of these topics will be featured on the next Creative Living Show. If you ever have comments or suggestions or ideas for shows, you can email me at cheryl.borden at ennmu.edu. And I'd also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com and in the search window type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much and I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer a new booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. This booklet is titled the 6500 Series, and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information, and it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. As with all of the Creative Living booklets, you'll find information on foods and nutrition, clothing and fashion, health and beauty, home decorating, and much more. For your copy of this booklet, go to our website at kenw.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on this booklet or any of the other booklets we have available online. Once again, just go to kenw.org, click on Creative Living and download the booklet titled the 6500 series. We also want to encourage you to sign up for our free e-newsletter. Just click on the sign up now button and input your email address. That's all there is to it. You'll enjoy reading an up-to-date newsletter filled with interesting topics and information. Thank you.